So you end up with a continuum. And on one side, you have the government providing for the rights of the victim. And on the other side, you have the government providing for the rights of the perpetrator. You're watching the VSO Gun Channel, and today we're talking about Stand Your Ground passing in the state of Ohio. Thank you guys for watching, and it's excellent to have you here as always. Now, I'm not a news channel. Don't do a very good job covering the news, not gonna lie. But I'm in Ohio, so we're gonna go ahead and touch this one. And then on top of that, the coverage on this thing has been fairly abysmal. Um, there are clearly a whole lot of people out there that have no business talking about this issue whatsoever because they clearly got no clue. So what I want to do with today's video is talk about how Stand Your Ground fits into the greater self-defense doctrine and why it is imperative that this finally get on the books after seven or eight years of working to get it there. So this is not something that blew up overnight. This has been a continuous struggle to get our laws here in the state of Ohio brought up to self-defense standards across the board. Especially, I want to do today's video for anybody who's new. Perhaps you're a first-time owner. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of new people that came in last year, bought the first gun. Welcome. I don't care what your political stance is here today. However, there is going to be a few things that we need to talk about political-wise because there's been some crap that's gone downhill on this particular one. This was signed into law by our governor, Mike DeWine. However, that dude should get absolutely no credit for it whatsoever. He tried his best to derail it. Itty bitty, that big, very, very tiny amount of politics really, really quick. The state of Ohio is what is known as a Republican trifecta, which means the Republicans hold all three houses on an almost continuous basis. And that is because Generally speaking, Ohioans are limited government, traditional value, personal responsibility type people. It's just kind of how we as a populace kind of run. And it tends to push many voters towards the Republican side of the House. I used to identify as a Republican because I just thought that's how all Republicans were. So if you're on the outside looking in, things are a little bit different here in how we run our state as opposed to how the national politics are because clearly we don't have a whole lot in common with what's going on in Washington DC these days. Now what I think we can all agree on is that clearly we have indication of a larger public health issue at the offices of the governor. There is some kind of agent that lives inside the confines of those walls that causes a deterioration of the brain. First we had Kasich and now we got this fecklet. Stop, abort mission, Kurt. I clearly have very strong opinions about this person's performance, and I absolutely think they should be primaried in the next go around. But what I was trying to get to, instead of going on that major tangent, was that we would not know nearly as much about the grimy, dirty, backdoor, backstabbing, legislative bureaucrat of crap that they tried to pack into this bill if it wasn't for our pro Second Amendment advocates inside the legislature that were just absolutely hammering, or, hammering it out, active, and letting us know about it. And then also the coverage of Ohio gun owners. Uh, Chris, if you're seeing this, call me up. I'd love to talk about how we can uh, work together in the future to make sure that this anti-gun march that's gaining steam inside of our state is beaten back. Okay, on to the actual topic. But first, I am not an attorney, and this is not legal advice should not be construed to be legal advice or anything shape, manner, or form that should resemble it. But I want you to think of a continuum. The government has a responsibility to provide safeguards for the rights of its citizens. That's why governments are instituted among men. That's why the government in the United States exists. It's to ensure that your rights are exercisable. I know that we've forgotten that in today's day and age because it seems like the government is just out for itself, but that's what it's supposed to do. At some point, people are going to have, people are going to fall into conflict with each other. And the government is supposed to sort that out. Sometimes this works really good. We'll have conflicts that occur over the span of months or years, plenty of time for them to get involved. Other situations, conflicts happen and conclude on the scale of seconds. And that's where modern self-defense doctrine comes in because the government literally does not have time 
to provide for your rights. Let's break this down to as simple a discussion as we possibly can. Person A versus Person B. They get into a fight. Both of them are seriously injured. Depending on the laws of the land of the day, a thousand years ago, they could both be punished by the law because they both committed an illegal act. Today, we have a little bit more of an uh, enlightened or civilized view of how that sort of stuff happens. And we say, no, nah, no, nah, that, that doesn't really work here. The aggressor is the one who should be punished, not the victim. So we've now separated a clear victim and a clear aggressor. So you end up with a continuum. And on one side, you have the government providing for the rights of the victim. And on the other side, you have the government providing for the rights of the perpetrator. And they have to do both. They have a mandate from the Constitution to do so. Because remember, in the United States of America, you are innocent until proven guilty. Now, I didn't go for a sponsor on today's video because I'm literally filming this like a few minutes before it publishes. Like probably super low editing on this thing, not even going to lie. I'm on a very, very tight deadline because I got some places to go this evening. That said, there are ways that you can contribute directly to the VSO Gun Channel. I greatly appreciate you guys that do. Patreon and Subscribestar are obviously the easiest ones, but if you want something in return uh, for that sort of thing, then we also have a web store over at vsordinance.com. So go ahead and check that out. I uh, can't link there directly, obviously, but there's some stuff over there that we do. Thank you. The first pillar of that continuum is enshrined in the Bill of Rights, and that is the right of the people to keep and bear arms. That is to own guns and carry them for self-defense. Now, many states have moved to uh, a concealed carry type situation. Uh, many states also have open carry. So in the state of Ohio, we have concealed and open carry. In my opinion, as far as that situation is concerned when we're talking about individual self-defense, like on the streets and things like that, I personally believe that it should be concealed carry over open carry simply for tactics. I believe it is a tactical error to open carry. Uh, I think that it makes uh, a lot more sense from a tactic standpoint to have that weapon concealed than it does to have it hanging out in the open. Now, carrying your rifles and things like that. That's a completely different issue. That's not something that we're talking about here. Pillar two is castle doctrine. A lot of places will say, you got to try to get away. And most places that have dealt with uh, self-defense issues within their state define the point at which you no longer need to retreat within your home, within your property. If you're inside your house, and somebody tries to follow you into your house and do you bodily harm, you no longer have to flee from your home. Many other places, again, your specific situation may be different, but a lot of times that will also extend to places like hotel rooms, your car, things like that. Again, your individual locale may, ver may vary on these things, but generally speaking, Castle Doctrine says, hey, once you get to your safe zone, you no longer have to retreat. Once they've encroached on that place, yeah, now, now you literally can't get away. The third pillar, and I think this puts us squarely in the center, where now we're kind of on equal terms of the government providing for the rights of the citizen who's a victim and the right of the citizen who is the perpetrator, and that is stand your ground. Stand your ground basically says that there are several situations where, hey, that whole duty to retreat thing is really detrimental to the rights of the victim. And it's just not a good idea. A case in point, uh, there was a video I watched the other day where there was a dude sitting there with his kid just eating ice cream, okay? And some dude walks up and tries to mug him, pulls a gun, and the dad pulls his pistol out and shoots the dude. Um... Well, yeah, the dad could have tried to retreat, but chances are his action is going to be to grab the kid and try to remove them from the area, potentially pulling the kid into the crossfire, trying to get him, get him out of the situation. In that situation, uh, the government has sort of recognized that, hey, you know what? There are circumstances where it can do more harm to try to get away from someone than to engage in lethal force if they've met the other criteria of engagement using lethal force. So that is where stand your ground fits into the continuum. There's one more pillar above that and it's very uncommon. I think there's only one location that has it. 
I may be wrong, sound off in the comment section down below, but that is the make my day law. And that is essentially, if someone is on your property and attempting to commit a felony on your property, then you have a right to engage in lethal force for the protection of yourself, others, and your property. That is very uncommon. Until we've escalated to make my day status, stand your ground still only applies to you and the people around you. It's for protection of life. It is not for the protection of property. There's a big difference there. And once we've moved into the make my day type laws, that's when we're talking about uh, shifting the continuum well into the favor of that of the victim. I'm not going to remark, but it's really up to you guys with what you want to do and your individual locales, which you want to push for. The modern equilibrium point is right to carry, castle doctrine, stand your ground. The way we did it here in the state of Ohio is to get concealed carry on the books. We accepted an imperfect law and we have been amending it ever since to bring it up to modern self-defense doctrine. And that is the march that you guys have been seeing the, the changing of the law over time. And that is what I would suggest that anybody who wants to start a right to self-defense movement inside their state, that's the way you guys should go about it. We are in a consistent state of trying to perfect self-defense situation here in the state of Ohio. And this was a positive because we're finally getting a provision that is literally 15 years old. And that is the status of things here in Ohio. So if you hear anybody talking smack on stand your ground, they clearly have no idea what they're talking about. And they're probably just regurgitating some talking points. Because remember, in the United States of America, it is guilty and proven 